Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in to today's Chief's Corner, Chief Power 67 Cyberspace Wing. We have an awesome Chief's Corner podcast today with Senior Airman Catherine Bruyette. All right, Airman Bruyette, thank you so much for, for being here. This is an awesome opportunity to connect with, uh, to connect with you, to understand you know, the life of a cyber warfare operator. So I got a chance to meet you really um, not too long ago, very recently, uh, when we went to the Mayor's Cyber Cup in San Antonio. So this is like the best of the best of Cyber Patriot, all of the kind of young Americans, um, a lot of those that are here local in, in Texas come together for the Mayor's Cyber Cup. They announce all the winning teams and a lot of them go on to compete at the national level. But thankfully for us and, and certainly everybody who attended, I got a chance to meet you. You were working uh, at the 67 Cyberspace Wing booth to talk to a lot of these very young, talented, gifted uh, Americans who may be interested in joining the Air Force and, and becoming a cyber operator like you. Um, that was awesome to meet you. And then I think I asked, hey, would you be willing to be on a on a Chiefs Corner podcast? So thank you for doing this. Yes, they, it was a great time. Um, it was nice to meet you, and I appreciate you having me here today. So awesome. I'm excited to get into it. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. We are too. So before we talk about uh, this incredible job you do as a cyber warfare operator, I'd love to learn a little bit more about your background, who you are, and kind of what led you to the Air Force. Yes, yeah, so... What led me to the Air Force is kind of a little bit of a long story. Um, both my parents were in the Army uh, before I was born, and they took a lot of the values that they learned in the Army and applied it to their parenting and our family dynamic. So I kind of grew up around teamwork, you know, helping out your siblings, making sure that you know everything is taken care of, you don't leave anybody behind. Um, That's awesome. And I kind of I wanted that for myself. You know, I wanted to be a young adult that had good values, that was self-disciplined, um, things like that. So that's what drew me to just the military in general. And then the other part of it was I want to be challenged. So that's what you know led me to the Air Force and cyber. Was just I wanted I wanted a challenge. I wanted something that was going to push me to my limit. Awesome! Wow, mm -hmm. very cool. Yeah, my my dad was in the Army too, and when I when I first approached him, I was like, "Hey, Dad, I'm, you know, thinking about the military." He, he, he in a very funny way, he said, "But before you do that, why don't you try the Air Force out?" <laughs> My dad said the same thing. I said, "Dad, I'm going to join the Army." He said, "No." Oh. Yeah. He was like, oh. "You might want to do some research." And then I was like, "Okay, yeah." yeah. Did my research, and I was like, "You're right." Awesome. Well, we are so grateful your dad gave you that advice. <laughs> Me too. Um, it was a great decision, and certainly a, a big win for the Air Force. Um, so you're an airman in the United States Air Force, and, and you mentioned cyber as being maybe something that, that you wanted to challenge yourself with. Mm -hmm. Did, was, it, was it an option where, you know, you, you found out you were going to be a cyber warfare operator before you went off to basic training? Yes. So the way that I came about this was um, when I was talking to my recruiter, I had kind of already in my mind knew I wanted to do cyber. So I was telling my recruiter, hey, I want to do cyber. And they were kind of telling me, you're not going to get cyber. You don't have certifications. You don't have college. You know, we want people who already have experience for even just the one Delta career fields. Um, you know, I was kind of upset. I was like, oh, I really wanted to do cyber. So I talked to my dad about it. And my dad was like, you need to talk to somebody who is already in the military that's not your recruiter um, to get a feel for what career field you would actually want to do because you might have your mindset on cyber but you might want to do something else that you just don't know about. That's good. Um, so I ended up calling a friend of his <laughs> who was in the military and he kind of gave me some advice on cyber. That's when he told me about the One Bravo pipeline. Um, at the time he was trying to stand it up. And yeah. Do you want to? No, you know what? It's <laughs> I, I drop things all day. It's quite funny. No, so I, being a one Bravo four um, directly upon entry into the United States Air Force is very very new. In fact, uh, if if I understand correctly, you're you're one of the the very early ones to actually do this. 
Yes. I'm the first direct accession. I'm not the first non-prior because we had the three the three Delta at the time, uh, cyber transport airmen that came through. But for airmen coming straight from recruiter's office, BMT, then through the 1B pipeline, that I was the first one to do that. Wow. Incredible. Wow. Talk about... Uh, you know, groundbreaking, uh, just, you know, as an Air Force, I remember when they created the one Bravo four career field, you know, cyber was still pretty new and we were kind of understanding it, um, but quickly realizing it as a war fighting domain, um, you know, not just all the dependencies that, that all of the weapon systems of all the military services rely upon, they all have cyber baked into them. But also on top of that, we, we literally fight in cyber, just like we do in air, land, sea, and now space. Um, but to now allow um, direct non-prior service accessions to go into that. Like you said, it was one where back in the day you have had to have years of experience, maybe in the in the comm community, mm-hmm. uh, three Delta back in the day, one Delta is, is, is my primary yeah. FSC. So, you know, oftentimes we would find that would be a great career field to retrain from into it. It was a retraining only opportunity. Um, but there was other career fields. I, I've met a lot of incredible one Bravo fours that were defenders, medical, just you know, intel. The sky's the limit. But yeah. um, you, you kind of have created a new generation of one Bravos, um, you literally paving the way where you came right in, uh, went to basic training. So after basic training, if you're willing to share, what what was the training, you know, pipeline? What was that process for you? Yeah. So when I came through, because I was the first, there were still a lot of things that needed to be ironed out. Um, when I got out of BMT and I went straight to Keesler in Mississippi, there was a bit of confusion, you know, because it was like, are you sure your orders are supposed to say 333rd? And I was like, I don't know. I just got here. <laughs> um, but, you know, we ended up figuring it out. Uh, basically, the training pipeline is uh, ITF, uh, which is about a month long, I think. And then you take Sec Plus, which I think is a two week course. And then you go straight to 333rd and that's five months, six months of training. So that's what I did. And then once I graduated, um, I went back to my unit, actually, the one that I was assigned to, which was 33rd. And then from there, I went to Herbert. So I went to like your initial skills training and her initial qualification training. And then I went through MQT and yeah, I got qualified. Wow. But that's pretty much, it was about, for me, I think I spent about a year and a half training. Wow. Because things needed to be ironed out. I had clearance. I needed to work, my clearance needed to get done. So I had to wait on starting the 1B4 pipeline for a while while they figured out my clearance. And then after that, you know, there's there's a lot of waiting. You get to your unit, you have to wait for a date at the 39th. So it's kind of like, you go when you go. Yeah, it's it's a very, um, you know, the, the, the throughput is actually quite small. There's, you know, not, you know, not to make you uncomfortable, but you're you're exceptionally gifted and talented, and you have a lot of um, a lot of skills that 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 we covet for this exquisite career field, um, and it's an extensive training process. So yep. being a part of that is huge. So congratulations, you. you're, you're you're one of the, certainly the elite cyber warfare operators that um, that we we rely upon to keep our cyber domain uh, safe and secure and protected, and you do a great job at that. The training is definitely worth it. Yeah, nice. yeah. The, the training is is, you know, it's pretty long. It's one of the longer ones we have in the Air Force. I know Intel has some pretty long ones mm-hmm. too. Um, we have a lot of Intel uh, professionals in the 67th. But um, so at Keesler for a long time, then you go to Hurlburt Field for for another um, you know extended period of time, yeah. and then you uh, so IST you know then IQT and then you come to your your unit today, which is the 834. Mm. 836. I'm sorry, 836. Yeah. My apologies, 836. Um, uh, which which is a pretty awesome unit with a pretty awesome mission as a national cyber protection team mm-hmm. um, that you're able to um, you know, defend the cyber domain certainly for the things that we think are important but sometimes you take care of other um, you know uh, opportunities out there for other people that, that have requirements that they need to keep protected as well so I, I'm convinced that probably today somebody is tuned in watching or listening and 
they, they, they look at um, your career, your experience, and, and there's a good chance they want to be like you. They want to follow in your footsteps. What advice would you have for somebody listening that maybe not in the Air Force right now, maybe interested in joining the Air Force, and, and on top of that, maybe they want to be a cyber warfare operator or one Bravo 4. What advice would you have? Yeah, um, my advice is depend. it doesn't really depend on what career field you want to join. If you're thinking about joining the Air Force, uh, preparing yourself for joining the Air Force is, needs to be your biggest priority. So for me, that's taking care of your health, you know, working out, doing little things like, you know, if you're working, showing up early, showing up early to everything so you can get into the habit of already following the statutes that you're going to be expected to follow once you join. Um, I think that makes the transition a little bit easier. And then the Air Force will prepare you to be one before they're going to train you. And yeah, I, I wouldn't worry too much about preparing yourself to be a one before because you'll get that. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Oh, we're, we're grateful that that certainly uh, that, that, that you were one of the, the, the first to, to come directly into the Air Force, prove that this is a, an important decision that the Air Force made to transition to direct the sessions so we can have the, the best of the best that our country offers who are already uh, raising their right hand to join and, and be a part of this great Air Force that we're a part of. And then on top of that, to be a cyber warfare operator. It's a pretty awesome uh, mission that we have here in the 67th. The 836's mission is incredibly awesome. Um, I, I would be remiss if I didn't get a chance to, to ask, you know, what, what advice do you have for um, those out there that want to, uh, you know, just be, just to be a successful airman like you, like, you know, not, not necessarily a one Bravo four cyber warfare mm -hmm. operator, you know, just, just to be a successful airman, because you, you definitely are doing a great job uh, as an airman in our air force. And we want, a lot of people to do that great job just like you. So what advice would you give to people like me or others that are hoping to learn from you? Yeah, I think it's, you know, one step at a time, one day at a time. It, you, my biggest motivator, I guess, for continuing my education, uh, developing myself is not being a burden to my team. Uh, that's like my biggest fear is that, oh, Bria, you know, she doesn't do anything. She's <laughs> kind of dragging us down. Um, and if I feel like I am not improving in some way, then I'm gonna seek out something that I can do, whether that's starting college, um, trying for another SANS cert, um, Gunslinger University, which I just started because I had some free time. Uh, stuff like that, you know, it's something that you do when, as soon as you start feeling like, I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing right now, you gotta find something. Find something to do, start, even if you can't, oh, I can't do it right now because in three months I have this. Just start it, yeah. wow. just start it. That's awesome, that's great perspective, great advice. Um, sounds like you're a lifelong learner. Maybe yeah. this has uh, been, been who, who you always. Uh, I was homeschooled, so, awesome. Awesome. Um, you know, teaching yourself is a big part of me yeah. homeschooled. No, that's awesome. I, we, I have, soon to be five-year-old twins and we're, uh, wow. we homeschooled pre-K, which step one was Pretty, pretty uh, awesome, but I know it's gonna get harder, but we're excited about homeschooling kindergarten next. Oh, yeah, it's, I, I enjoyed homeschooling a lot. Um, and I know my mom did. She's, my mom is a very big lifelong learner. She's awesome. still homeschooling 30 wow. years now. Wow, incredible. Well, mm -hmm. thanks to your mom and your dad <laughs> and to everybody that's a part of your support team for helping you be the incredible airman you are, the phenomenal One Bravo 4 cyber warfare operator. And, you know, like I said, when we opened, I, I got a chance to see you in action at the Cyber uh, Cup, the Mayor Cyber Cup uh, for Cyber Patriot. And it was pretty cool. Like I, I went, I got dressed up and I was like, I'm going to be talking to a lot of young Americans who are excited. I, I think I maybe had one or two people talk to me <laughs> and I, I looked over at you and there's like this super long line. And I don't know if you ever had a chance to kind of, you know, catch your breath or, you know, get, get some water. But you nonstop young Americans were lined up to talk to you. I think that's fun. I mean, that's the best part for me. I really enjoy talking to people about it because I felt I was homeschooled. So I didn't have, um, I guess, as much access to information as someone who goes to school and is into Cyber Patriot program. Um, but that's something that I really wish that I had was somebody that I could just, 
hey, you're in, you're doing it, you know, what is it like, um, what should I expect, things like that. I, I actually really enjoy talking to young it's, kids about that. And so it's it's huge. What you what you just being there uh, established so much of a you know presence and the credibility. You know, you do it every day, but so we have airmen in this wing literally right now who credit their decision to join the Air Force because of Cyber Patriot, because of the mentors that are airmen in this wing. Uh, being on the teams to kind of motivate, support them, and coach them. You did that, uh, and I know you're going to continue to do that. So thank you, certainly, for for the extra stuff that you do to support the community. Uh, but also just thanks for being a great airman and a great uh, pioneer as, as a direct accession, the first uh, to become a One Bravo 4. We're super proud of you, and we're excited to continue to serve with you. Thank you so much. Awesome. Thanks for being here today. So teammates, thanks for tuning in to another great Chiefs Corner with Senior Airman Bruyette who is a phenomenal cyber warfare operator getting after it every single day to make us America's premier cyber wing. And as always, light them up.